when you go out there, I really encourage you to try and sense your body more and sense the skis on the snow because that enables you to then switch off the, the overcritical part of your brain and really start skiing by feel. And that's what the best skiers are doing. Body alignment in your journey of skiing becomes more and more important as you start taking on steeper slopes and building more forces during a ski turn. In today's Carve Technique Teardown, I'd like to look at this topic of body alignment, particularly with the outside leg, to see if I can help you discover a stronger position on the outside ski, better grip and the ability to build higher edge angles, and therefore be able to control the turn shape as you start taking on steeper runs and you start going faster in your skiing. I'm Tom Gelly, and you're watching Carve's Technique Teardown. Now, sometimes in skiing, there can be too much of a good thing. And what I'm referring to here is, as you get better at skiing, you'll learn that you wanna look for some early edge in your ski turns. And this early edge comes from rolling the ankle and knees. And this helps develop a platform and get the ski to grip early and give you some balance early in a turn. This ankle and knee rolling though, I find can, can be taken a little bit too far. In today's video, we'll be using a skier named Renzo, who's quite a good skier, but just because he's at this uh, more advanced level, I want you as a viewer to, to know that basically this information will help everyone from the complete beginner to the expert elite skier, because it is just an alignment issue. So a couple of things out of the way, this run looks ideal really for carving. It's got a good pitch on it. He can get enough speed to make some long radius carve turns. There's no one on the run, looks well groomed. So all of those things I can sort of put aside and say I don't think they're affecting what is going on with Renzo skiing. So to the topic today, if we have a look at the initiation of the turn, uh, some good things going on. He's, he's developing some early edge angle. That ski is building a nice platform and is even starting to bend and be pressured high up in the turn. Now this is something in your skiing journey you'll learn. You wanna roll the outside ski onto the edge using the ankles and knees. But something that possibly is going on that I pick up is I think he is taking this same movement and using it to keep increase, ed increase his edge angle and uh, shape the turn for the rest of the turn. And so why I see that? Well, as we come around further and, and this point in the turn, the outside ankle looks a little too flexed to me. Okay, so it could be that he's, he's flexing it too much. It also is uh, quite upright in his upper body and his feet are splitting apart. And so his position just doesn't look super strong to me on the outside ski. And he's a really good skier. so. He, I imagine he knows a lot about skiing and he knows about this, you know, there you go, ankle early edge roll movement. But to me, with my eye, I just see that this is maybe overdone, okay? And we'll bring in myself as a comparison soon, but, but just some things, some helpful things. If you've got carve, you might be able to have a look at some of your metrics, including end of turn score, which is looking at where your balance is under your outside foot through the completion phase of the turn. Now I'd say Renzo possibly has a low end of turn score because of how he's, I think, trying to use the ankle and knee almost too much. It's, it's over flexing that outside ankle and not al allowing him to stand in the center of the foot and the center of the ski at the end of the turn. I would also say his uh, edge smoothness score might uh, be a little bit lower than it could be as well because as it gets steeper here, you can see he can't uh, consistently keep the ski uh, working smoothly at higher edge angles. It sometimes skids out. Again, because I believe the alignment of the outside leg, he's overdoing an ankle and knee movement. So if you've got carved, you could also look at edge smoothness as a metric. And if it's not as high as some of the other metrics, it might be a giveaway uh, that you are doing this uh, ankle and knee movement a little bit too much. Let's bring in myself next to Renzo so you can see more with more clarity because it's quite subtle, the difference between uh, our outside leg at the top of the turn and then later in the turn. Now that we have two skiers side by side, 
it might be a little bit easier to see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to bring your attention to the outside leg of myself and Renzo on the right. And hopefully it's a little clearer now to see that it looks like, yes, he's rolled the outside ski onto an early edge, but it looks like it's, it's, it's almost going further than the rest of his body. Okay, so it's almost overtaking the, the femur and the, and the hip and the, and the rest of the body. Because if you contrast that with uh, my outside leg early in the turn, I can tell you I've actively rolled the ankle and the knee, but just enough so that my lower leg lines up more with my femur. So there's a straighter line, and that helps me as the turn develops to stay in a really strong position. And as I increase edge angle, which is gonna increase the force, and the forces build uh, higher at this part of the turn, I can be in a much stronger position. So you can see here, Renzo's outside leg and, and knee look more flexed, the outside ankle looks more flexed. And so uh, this is just not such a strong position to be in. And so this is where that end of turn score metric on carb would be coming into play. And it's looking to see good skiers kind of move the feet through and uh, keep the balance in the center of the ski and more the center of the foot. And you probably can you look at Renzo, you can see that foot is lagging behind and there's a lot of flex in, in, the, in the ankle there that wouldn't be showing up with the pressure sensors. And so he's, uh, yeah, th that's possibly a consequence of this uh, effort to drive the turn higher from too low in the body, okay? Now as it gets steeper, further on in the turn down here, what you can see is Renzo's turn shape sort of straightens out, so it's not really coming across the hill, whereas you're ideally able to, as the turn, uh, as, the, as the pitch gets steeper, you're still able to use uh, edging and increase it so you can carry your momentum uh, across the hill. The skis kind of act like, like a roller coaster or berm lines to keep you moving across the hill. And if you can't increase that edge angle as you pick up speed, you, you'll straighten out, which is what I'm seeing Renzo do here. So his edge smoothness score and carve would also be uh, probably not as high as it could be because of the alignment of his outside leg not in such a strong position to resist the forces and allow him to really get his body inside the turn uh, like I'm showing here. Let's jump over here and do a dryland exercise so you can feel and I can show you more clearly what happens when you take the ankle and knee rolling movement a little too far. So I invite you to stand up for this part to feel it. I mentioned that Good skiing involves rolling the ankles and knees uh, at the top of the turn, okay? But let's just see what happens if we take this cue a little bit too far and keep doing it. So I roll my ankles and knees, and I keep rolling my ankles and knees and think about driving the turn from down here. And what happens is my body needs to keep flexing and bending in order to achieve that. So yes, I might be increasing my edge angle, but what I'm also doing is I'm increasing how much flexion or bend I've got in both my legs. Now the outside leg needs to stay stronger because in a turn, if we are ending up flexed like this, so I keep rolling my ankles and knees a lot, this outside leg is really bent. And so I'm gonna find it very strenuous on my body and my muscles to hold this position. Whereas I feel when I make a good turn, my outside leg, uh, the ankle and knee is rolled in a little bit but my outside leg is much straighter, so I can resist the forces and stack my body more over the, like the center of my foot instead of sort of sinking too far behind when the, when the, when the pressure is really high. So if we look at a ski, what you're really trying to do is align your mass against the edge of the ski, because that's what's holding you up when you're making a carve turn. It's this very narrow point here. So you're trying to get your, uh, the rest of your body to come through your outside hip joint and through the inside edge of your ski. So right here, not the center, okay? So I am aiming to get this ankle, the outside ankle and knee to roll in just enough. So if I look down, I would see my hip joint go through the center of my knee and that lines up with a laser line that is the inside edge of my foot, 
Okay, that inside edge of my foot right here would correspond to the inside edge of the ski. Now my weight is balanced on the edge of the ski and I haven't gone too far because if I take it again too far, now my hip is actually pressuring the knee to go in this way and, and, and things are flexing more so I'm not getting a direct line of force to the edge and that's where I want it to be. An at-home exercise that's very easy to simulate feeling this how much is you find a wall to lean against and you start by creating some edge angles so leaning over a little bit putting the hips inside the turn leave your outside foot passive and flat okay so this is no ankle and knee engagement what I'll what I notice is I feel my 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 knee is kind of outside of the line where my hip goes to my foot it's not in there and the pressure is not on the inside edge of my foot so what do I need to do I need to pick up the foot the outside edge of my foot the pinky toe side roll it over I'll feel the knee move inside and then I need to look down and and almost you have to you have to feel in your body so if I pick up this leg you have to feel that my weight is going through this hip through the knee and then is pressuring the inside edge of my foot okay if I take the ankle and knee roll again really far I don't feel like these 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 points line up these three points line up if I am not active enough, I also feel I don't line up in a straight line. So I think of a laser going from the inside of my foot through the, in, the center of my knee and my hip. I'm, I'm rolling the ankle just enough and, and helping the knee move just enough to line up those three points. Okay, so you can do it on both sides, but you're just going to move in and out and try and find this ideal Goldilocks amount of lining uh, the hip knee and ankle enough and that's the enough ankle and knee roll that you need a couple of final points I'd like to mention skiing is really a, a feeling sport so although you might need some time to think about what we're doing here and analyze what's going on when you go out there I really encourage you to try and sense your body more and sense the skis on the snow because that enables you to then switch off the, the overcritical part of your brain and really start skiing by feel and that's what the best skiers are doing. You do have to go through a process of sort of thinking and analyzing and breaking it down but that's why I've given you some exercises to, to feel things and encourage you to do it indoors because once you get that you can get rid of that side of things and really just enjoy skiing the mountain more. That's where you're really ideally getting towards. And the other final note is, as with any skier, there are many things we could pick on and look at and analyze. I've just chosen today to pick one thing that I think is a really interesting topic, and I see a lot of people making this as a common mistake. And so I hope you take that with a grain of salt when you think about leaving a comment below, uh, whether this has helped you or you found it interesting, and yeah, just to keep that, that in mind. I'm Tom Gelly. you've just watched the Carve Technique Teardown and I hope this helps improve your skiing and makes it a whole lot more enjoyable. Thanks. Mm -hmm.